Welcome back to Truck Tech, everyone. This week, we are going to do something a little different. It's actually a special episode of Truck Tech. It's setting up and going to begin to talk about, in depth, the subject of natural gas, or perhaps better known as RNG, or renewable natural gas. This is an area of the fueling infrastructure that is going to grow. Maybe it'll be 20% of heavy duty trucking as we move forward. What we're looking at now are customers like Wegmans Groceries in the Northeast and Frito-Lay and others that are making part of their fleets out of renewable natural gas powered trucks. So we're gonna look at this from the manufacturer side, which is Cummins. They have a new 15 liter engine coming that'll run on natural gas. We're talking to Kenworth, one of their early customers who is already uh, providing these engines to their customers. We'll talk to Hexagon Agility, which is making the fueling systems as well as the tanks uh, for these and others that are involved, like Opal Fuels, which is part of the fueling infrastructure. Uh, and so over the weeks, we're gonna bring you episodes that focus in on those. Today, we'll talk with Cummins, Kenworth, and Hexagon Agility about what's happening with RNG. Stay tuned, hope you enjoy it. So Sarah Abernathy, I, it's great to see you. I am uh, uh, really glad to be able to get a little deeper into the whole CNG, RNG story. You know, we've written a fair amount about it in Truck mm -hmm. Tech. Uh, we've done a few shows. We've been watching the X-15N from Cummins, really from the start, even back in China in a way. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys now get to be number one, bringing it out, actually selling it to customers, real customers first. Yes, we are so excited to launch the X-15N this year, and we're really excited to have this particular truck here in the Ride and Drive at Act Expo. It's one of the first X-15Ns out in the wild. When I get into this truck, and I haven't done it, but when I get into this truck, what, as, as a driver, what am I going to feel different? Well, what's exciting about the X-15N is that you shouldn't feel too much different between your diesel truck and an X-15N. This engine is designed to have diesel-like performance, which is a next step in, in natural gas technology. So that'll give drivers the performance, the power, and all that they need to do the heaviest loads and all the jobs that they've been doing with a, a larger bore 15 liter diesel engine with a natural gas engine. And this is something that's always been the sort of the wrap on natural gas. I mean, even the 12 liter, which is gonna be around for a while yet, but, mm -hmm. but it's always had that sort of, well, it's not powerful enough. I don't really like the torque so much things like that. You're not getting any of that now, are you? So far, so good. We're really excited. So far, we've made it this uh, engine to the Endurin HD 12-speed transmission. And so uh, Cummins and Eaton have worked really hard to make sure that the shift points and the drivability of the truck has been tuned and is on point for what drivers are expecting from a 15-liter. So sure. we're going to continue that development and ensure that it really does deliver exactly what customers need beyond the performance of the 12-liter. When you use RNG in a platform like the X-15N, you're taking your carbon footprint down to as low as it can possibly go with a combustion right. engine. And that's really important for our customers, for those with ESG goals, but just because it's the right thing to do. Right. Um, now, of course, we wanna make sure that we're meeting customers' needs in whatever application that they have and whatever fuel they have available to them. And we hope that it's RNG, but at the same time, being able to offer this with CNG and LNG compatibility is a big win for customers as well. Sure. You, you've had these uh, tested with some customers. I know you delivered one earlier, mm -hmm. a, a pilot model, I guess. Yes. Um, you said the feedback's so far so good. So far so good. Well, but as far as, are they able to get enough miles on it to really tell? I mean, we're talking about, you want to go a thousand miles or, or whatever on, on your uh, CNG or NNG, uh, mm -hmm. uh, RNG. Um, they can do this. We didn't talk about it, but there's really a potential for net zero carbon. There absolutely right? is. Right, and that's something that I think, you know, there was work being done, I know, on a hybrid for a little while, got certified in California. Mm -hmm. But it, there, there is, at this point, a, a real opportunity to meet 2027, the phase three mm -hmm. uh, greenhouse gas, right? Yeah, absolutely. This engine is certified to CARB standards. It meets low NOx omnibus requirements. And that's a really big win for customers, especially in 2024. Obviously, the long term is an important thing to keep in mind, but 2024 engines are hard to come by for California. And this is one that can go into the state, which we're really excited for. I like to think about natural gas as, as almost, well, the industry as an overall, as a pie, right? And the pie right now for those that already run natural gas is just one little slice. And the goal with the X-15N, and I think what's so exciting about it being a large bore engine, is that now we can expand our slice of the pie. And that's a big, big 
a big, big selling point for us, right? right? We know that this can hopefully do what they want. We just gotta help them get there, help them understand the fuel, help them hopefully look at RNG options that might be in their area. So Sarah, you know, there are differences in the specking. You spec a diesel truck a certain way. Natural gas is a little different. I mean, there's obviously gonna be some differences. What are the things that the dealers need to know to, to, to tell customers? Absolutely, great question. And that's one of the areas we're really trying to focus the most on at Kenworth, just to help prepare customers and dealers to have the conversations, and again, to get over that hurdle into natural gas. So some of the things that we're, we're telling our dealers to really keep in mind when they talk to their customers about a natural gas powered truck is, is what kind of layout do you normally run? Do you have a body on the back of that truck? What's your normal you know, um, fifth wheel setting? How do you normally set up your diesel? And then think about how, whether it's gonna be a back of cab setup like the one that we have on this truck here, whether you want to think about rail mounted tanks for those that have bodies, and just make sure that you have the right frame space for that. Make sure you're thinking about um, all of the additional things that you just wanna move around on your frame that may be a little bit different from your current diesel spec. So a lot of times, especially for a back of cab setup, you'll wanna add in a little bit of extra wheelbase, but sometimes as much as three feet, um, just to make sure you've got enough swing clearance for those trailers. And a lot of times for refuse applications, applications will see rail mounted tanks to help save space on the back of cab there. Right. So there's a lot to consider on the frame side, but on uh, in addition to the frame and actual um, you know, look of the truck, the drivability is again going to be key. And that's where you want to think about your rear axle ratio, understand that the torque curve is diesel-like, but it isn't exactly diesel. So you'll want to think about what that should look like for the types of grades that you might be running and the application overall. Puneet Jawad, good to see you again. You are now the general manager of alternative fuels as well as? Delivery system business. Delivery business, and here we go. So first time, we've seen it without the rest of it underneath, but looking, <laughs> at, the, uh, looking at the heads anyway for, for the uh, extra T10. Right. Getting a lot of attention now. You're in production, albeit early, but my goodness, I mean, this thing is, if it's not catching on by storm, it's certainly catching on. We yeah. know that. Yeah, it is, and uh, you know, it's a pleasure to be here and pleasure to be talking to you. It is, it is a fact that this engine has demonstrated and generated so much interest in the industry that it's unbelievable. We are super excited and happy with it. We are just about a couple of months away from regular production. It's going to come first in the Packard family, which is both the Kenworth and the Peterbilt truck. And then Freightliner is not far behind, so 2025, you should see the Freightliner truck coming out as well. And I can tell you how excited Kenworth is, because when you talk to Sarah Abernathy, she bubbles about this thing, really, she yeah. does. And it's something that, you know, we look at, uh, you know, we remember when it's launched in Asia, we remember talking at the time, it was the tail end of, the, of, of a joint venture you had, but, you know, the talk was, well, if we get interest here in, in the US, then we'll bring it here, and right. sure enough, yeah. Here we are. Yeah, and I think it is the right time to bring that engine in. And, and we've been debating this for a while to say what's the right timing as well. And, um, you know, we've, we've probably got over 40,000 installations globally on this platform. Um, it's run about 2 billion miles. Uh, in really? Which has been that it's been, and the feedback has been a resounding success, and we've been super happy with it. In the U.S. itself, um, the engines run about a million miles on the road. But that's over and above all the tests. Uh, units that we've got, the number of hours that we've put in and the test cycles and all of that. So yeah, so again, excellent resounding feedback, really good feedback, thumbs up from the customers. And we can't, we couldn't be more happier than that. Let me get these numbers right. Give me, give me an A or, or an F. 500 horsepower, 1850 pound feet of torque. That's a now threat. you're right there in diesel territory anyway. I mean, certainly people come and go right. around there, but, but the idea being that, you know, you've got something that you're able to Put up against a diesel, and I know you make plenty of those. I'm aware. Yeah. But you've got, you've got something you can say. Look, you can look at natural gas, and you don't have to hear your drivers complain about right. lack of torque and right. you know underpower. Yeah. And and that, and that's the truth, and that's why we've done and the, the helm platform that you see here, which is uh, which is displayed here, is that the, the anything that's below the head gasket is common to all the architectures. Sure. And then anything that's above the head gasket is unique to that kind of fuel type. So Helm kind of loosely stands that it's it's high efficiency, um, low emissions, and multiple fuels for us. And, and the first of that platform is actually the natural gas platform. Which, and then with the decarbonization side of it, we wanted to make sure that the customer experience was good. In our ages and ages of experience with the fuels type in, in natural gas, especially has taught us to say what we needed to do differently, both on the engine side of it, both on the component side of it, and some of the other things. 
And so I think that's the reason why we've, we've been able to maintain and get an engine out which kind of delivers and works like a diesel product. Now, the thing that really makes it go, literally go, is the potential for renewable natural gas, right? I mean, that's, that's what you really want uh, to be running in this. Certainly, you know, there's other forms of natural gas that work, yeah. but the idea of RNG, now you're getting down to that net zero carbon, uh, you know, plateau. And, uh, you know, of course, the, the, the NOx issue comes into effect for the phase three greenhouse gas right. in 27. But from an emissions profile, this has got to be uh, something that, you know, is going to kind of lead the pack. And RNG is a clean fuel. I mean, the carbon intensity score of that one is negative from a well to wheel standpoint. Um, but it, even if people don't use RNG and continue to use CNG as well, there is a 20% reduction in the carbon footprint for them, moving from diesel to natural gas. And then you start using a blend of natural gas and renewable gas. And then you go right to the full spectrum to say that I want the good stuff, which is renewable natural gas. And it, it, it is a, it's an excellent way to get to the decarbonization. Eric Bippus, we haven't seen each other in a few months now, but it's good to see you again. I'm glad to have you back on Truck Tech. It's great to be here with you today. Um, now we're with the real deal, right? Yep. I mean, we didn't have a truck in the plant in North Carolina that I remember. That's right. But we had certainly the, this, we had a few other things. I'm going to play a role here. I'm going to be a heavy duty fleet owner, which I'm not, sure. but I'm going to pretend. Sure. Okay? I want you to talk to me like I'm trying to figure out whether I want to do this or not. Right, right, great. No, that's great. Well, it certainly is exciting. It's exciting to have the truck here and you as a, as a potential fleet and, a, and, a, and a, uh, a customer of compressed natural gas. We're very excited with the new Cummins 15 liter that we spoke about before. Now it's out, it's going into production in the next 90 days. Orders are being filled for that right now. And this particular unit here is a Kenworth uh, powered by the Cummins X15N. And for a new adopting fleet or a fleet that doesn't understand infrastructure, how am I gonna fill it? The beauty of this is we have our back of cab, 175 diesel gallon equivalent, Pro Cab H, Pro Cab. We have our side mounts. This particular unit has two 30 gallon side mounts on each side. You can go up to 45 gallon on each side, which would give you roughly 265 diesel gallon equivalents. And you could easily get 1200 miles of range. Now that depends on your payload. Are you going up and down hills? Are you at 60,000 pounds or 80,000 pounds? All of that matters, but it gives that new adopting fleet the comfort to say, am I going to be able to make my route? When you can cover 1,200 miles, you fill a lot of gaps in infrastructure. So one of the main selling features of this is, is the range capability. When you compare it to other clean fuel technologies that are out there, like EV, which is has its place, but we're seeing now with some of the fleet user experience, it's probably 250 to 200 miles or less. The early days of compressed natural gas, back 2012, 2013, 2014, it was all about ROI. What is the, the, the price difference between diesel and compressed natural gas? Today, that's an important piece of it. Fleets are for-profit businesses. They've got to be able to deploy technology at scale that has a payback. But the carbon intensity score, decarbonizing heavy duty transport, meeting emission regulations coming up in EPA 2027. Now you've got renewable natural gas in the pipeline, usable in these with a, a negative carbon intensity score, depending on the source of the sure. renewable natural gas. If it's from dairy, certainly could be negative 300% versus diesel. Uh, if it's wastewater, it could be a little bit less. It's no longer just about the ROI, it's about, hey, I can really decarbonize my heavy duty fleet with a viable option. Yeah. You know, I don't know what the actual payback is on, on you know, buying a system and, and doing that. Maybe you can help us there, but I, I feel like if you're, if you're buying your fuel at $2 equivalent to diesel, mm -hmm. it's not gonna take too, too long to sort of make it up on the fuel side. I mean, fuel's number two, I think, in overall cost, right? Yeah, you're looking at, you know, typically, under four years, and in many cases under three years, depending on how many miles you're running per year. Now that's gonna be even better in a few years when EPA 2027 hits and you have all these NOx requirements that are gonna hit diesel. That's gonna add a significant amount of cost to a diesel truck. 
and close that gap on selling price between a compressed natural gas and a diesel truck. So we and expect that to go even lower. That's twenty-five to forty thousand dollars through what I've heard in terms of you know having that's, that that's second. That's what we're hearing too. That second uh, uh, cleaning system or, yep. or you know SCR system, uh, you know. So so yeah, you get a, a big catch up at that point. You know, it's interesting too though. I, you know, when we were in your facility in North Carolina, uh, you know, you're expanding. You're going to make are. some more tanks. We are. You know, we are. and and uh, uh, you know, I think I shared with you when we were together before that, you know, Cummins actually thought they might see 10% penetration. Well, now, you know, recently we're hearing maybe 15%. So maybe we're getting a little excited, but the yeah. fact is it's not going to be one or 2% anymore. Yeah, no, it, that, that's for sure. And it doesn't sound, 10% doesn't sound like much, but when you think 350,000 vehicles going into the park every single year, yeah. today, 97% are still diesel. I mean, made very little penetration. Going to 10%, now we're talking about 35, 45, maybe 50,000 compressed natural gas vehicles going into the market every single year. The feedback from early, early drivers mm -hmm. of this is, hey, you know what? I don't have to complain about torque anymore. I don't have to complain about it being underpowering, going up a That's hill right. and things like that. That becomes sort of word of mouth over time. Right. Uh, you know, and, and this was the biggest holdback on the 12 liter, or maybe sure. the nine liter, but you know, definitely on the 12 liter natural yeah, gas. Sure. And it's something that, you know, does seem to be the thing that gets this over the hump, if you will. Yeah. Uh, yeah, without a doubt, when you look at, let's just say 350,000 new Class 8 trucks going into the marketplace per year, the 12 liter was suitable for about 100,000 of those, those day cab operations, return to base at the end of the day. That's roughly consistently 100,000 trucks per year that you had that 400 horsepower engine could service. When you went beyond that, now you start getting into higher payloads, longer haul applications, sleeper applications where you may have tandem drivers, in some cases triple drivers where they're going long distances, really required the up to 500 horsepower type of, type, type of power under the hood. Now we can cover that, so we're opening up an additional 250,000 Class A trucks that we could say, we have a solution for you now. So we got a really good deep dive today into the whole idea and the value chain around renewable natural gas. The whole point being that there is an emissions profile change that is way positive, possible net zero carbon. We've heard from folks who are going to sell the trucks, the first being Kenworth and Sarah Abernathy. We talked with Cummins, who's making the engine and actually started in Asia with us, but now is in production and getting very near regular production of the X15N engine. And finally, with Eric Bippus from Hexagon Agility, which is making the tanks and a whole lot of the, the uh, systems that really make RNG work. You're going to hear a lot more about this on FreightWaves over the next few weeks and months as we talk to these folks at length about their part in this value chain. For today, it's just a sampler. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.